So, nanotech, the technology that promised us vast amounts of enhanced equipment, nano robots in your bloodstream, nano treated agriculture, even graphene. Well, where are they? That's what we're covering in this video. the concept that nanotechnology is a revolutionary area of technology. But what really is holding it back? Well, we as nanoscientists don't actually know the properties of nanoparticles, as stuff at a small scale undergoes quantum effects, so it's completely different from how we see it in the physical world. For example, gold at a nanoscale is red in colour and reactive, but at a large scale how we see it, gold is gold in colour and very unreactive. This means cool applications of nanotechnology like nanorobots in the body and nano agriculture can't be done anytime soon as it can be very toxic, very very toxic if the material is chosen wrong, especially if you're using it in plants and humans. This is where nanoparticle simulation comes in. This is not a new thing. Molecular simulations have been in play for years at this point. It works by predicting the relative electron position per atom and where the electrons are in the atom and how it's bonded determines its properties. But wait, but wait, what do I mean by properties? There are three main types of properties, thermodynamic, semiconductor and surface properties. These are what we need to find out using classical or quantum algorithms to find out uh, how it will interact in the real world. Classical algorithms have worked to simulate particles, but at a very small size. This is because large molecules like certain drugs need a load of computational power to simulate as the amount of electrons in the molecule corresponds to the amount of bits used. This is because of classical computing used binary to you like to calculate the amount of electrons and using cl uh, classical algorithms. This means there's a cap to that uh, computational power which means that quantum computing is the next solution. Quantum mechanics operates with the probability of a qubit collapsing, which basically means that it has exponentially more computational power as there's more states that the bit qubit can go in. Scientists have been developing theories and algorithms like VQE, DFT and PEA that calculates the probability of an electron position. But DFT is different, it uses the density of the whole molecule to then calculate the ground state wave function which basically means the lowest state of the uh, the electron flow, and that's solved by solving the, solving the Schrodinger equation. It seems too good to be true, the applications are wide, but what are the limitations? Quantum and classical algorithms can be very time consuming and difficult, as we're repeating the action of solving the Schrodinger equation to get the ground state wave function. But still, though the number of qubits still have to develop to make this uh, the theories and algorithms more effective, I definitely do think there will be news and breakthroughs to help us move us closer to the promises of nanotechnology. And as we've seen new ideas like quantum machine learning, for example, and optimization of quantum algorithms, I don't see why nanotechnology can spark innovation worldwide. So, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Please hit the subscribe button, like, share this video. I linked the Medium article that I wrote down in the description below that I've extended my learning through. Uh, please go and check that out. So that's it from me. See you.